Hey everybody, a new version of Resolve is out. This is version 18.5. There's a lot of really cool features. I figured I'd do just a quick little overview video and talk about some of the things that I'm most excited about. So let's jump in. All right, so first major feature that I think everybody's been asking for for a long time is automated subtitles. So check this out. I have a timeline here. There's some dialogue in it. And here from the edit page, I can just right click and say add subtitle track. And once I have a track there, I can just go up to timeline, create subtitles from audio. It'll ask me a couple options. I'll hit create and it will analyze the audio from the timeline and it will generate subtitles and place them in the subtitle track in my timeline. And it's also combined with AI. So it also adds things like punctuation and it does a pretty good job. The first time I ever went to a sushi place, this guy that I worked with was, was really nice, took me to this nice place, but he didn't tell me that the wasabi was wasabi. He told me it was mint paste. Oh gosh. It, and it does a great job. It creates these subtitles and it's just a regular subtitle track, which the subtitles in Resolve are quite good. And you can go in and adjust the length and the timing and everything of them, just like they were subtitles that you created yourself. It just generates them for you based on the audio from your timeline. Very, very cool. Something else that sounds kind of similar is the audio transcription. How it works is you select one or multiple clips in your media pool, and then you right click and go to transcribe audio. And it'll think about it for a minute, but then it'll show up with this window and you can go through the clips and it will show you everything that's said in the video, which is cool in itself. But you can also edit your video and kind of make sub clips and do a bunch of stuff here just using this text, right? So here we have, I'm starting the video, check, check, check. So yeah, we're here at a different beach and look at this, haha, -ha, look, look at this picturesque goodness. So maybe I just want to grab that so yeah, we're here at a different beach. Look at this. Okay. So I can take this and I can make it a sub clip in the media pool. I can play this back and kind of preview it. And I can also just insert this or append this into my timeline. So I can select just certain words from a clip and it will throw just the part of the clip that I've selected here into the timeline. So this changes your editing process a little bit because you can just select what you want and throw it in the timeline. Yeah, we're here. crazy. You can even search for terms. So I can search for front. And I know we have front street here in this clip thing. That's so cool. Such an easy way to go through a bunch of clips. That's going to make things so much easier. And yeah, you can do this for a batch of clips and kind of edit your video that way. Let's head over to the Fusion page because there are a couple fancy things happening there. One thing I'm really excited about, this is gonna be a really big deal, is they're adding support for USD, which is Universal Scene Description. I'll hit Shift Spacebar to bring up our select tool and you can search for USD. Basically, it's a universal format for a 3D scene, which is really exciting. It's something that kind of replaces the need for something like an FBX if you're into 3D stuff. Just to kind of show this off, I'll just bring up U Shape and then let's do U render and we'll put this out in our media out here. Let's just make a torus. And at first glance, this looks basically like the normal 3D nodes, but there is a lot of stuff here under the hood. There are a whole new set of nodes and lights. There's even dome lighting where you can use HDRIs. And the default renderer is a different kind of renderer than the normal 3D nodes. And it's the storm renderer. It's very quick and it looks really good. I can just enable scene lighting here. Look at that. We have that nice soft lighting and it renders quick. Look at this. Ooh, no problem. And I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty cool. This opens up a huge huge realm of possibilities for fusion. The 3D in fusion, I think is gonna be pretty awesome before too long. I've seen some comps that the Blackmagic people are working on that are using these USD nodes. And I gotta say, man, they are very, very impressive. So be on the lookout for this, open this up and play with it. If you guys are interested in more USD 3D stuff in fusion, let me know in the comments. I would love to jump into this a little more. Something else in fusion is a new node called a multi-merge. I'll hit shift spacebar and type M-U-L-T-I. And this is just a special merge node. I'll just add some text here. 
And it works just like any other merge node, except you can add multiple layers inside of this merge node. So you can just plug in another layer and another one, and you can get just tons of layers all plugged into this merge node, which is great for anyone who's used to layer-based compositing, because if you select this merge node, you can go up in the inspector and you have a list of layers and you can drag them around to reorder them. And each layer has properties just like they would if you use multiple merges, but it all lives in one merge. This is one of those things where I think you're going to have to be careful uh, how you organize your nodes still, because this still has kind of the possibility of just being a disorganized bowl of noodles. But this is really cool to be able to have a layer list. So if this makes a little bit more sense to you, this is a great feature to check out. It's called multi-merge. So let's check out a couple other cool things on the color page. There are a lot of little improvements, kind of quality of life things. One of them being able to swap your input and output for your CSTs. For instance, if I have this at Sony S Gamut 3 Cine S Log 3, and I want to go to Rec 709, I can quickly swap these back and forth, which is great if I'm going from, you know, some kind of camera color space into scene space or back and forth. Really easy to just swap those instead of having to select them all again. Love that. So much better. Also, there is a new crazy plugin called Relight. Now this isn't quite working on the system that I'm working on right now, but rather than just skip over this, I wanna at least tell you about it because I've seen this in action and it's freaking amazing. Basically what it does is it will analyze the image and it will make a normal map, which is a way of kind of figuring out the direction that each surface is facing. And it will add a digital light that you can use as a mat for any kind of color correction. So there's a little bit more in the Blackmagic demos that they're posting and I can't wait to dive in and show you guys this because it's really really cool. I'm going to do a whole in-depth video about it. Very exciting. Another thing that's pretty amazing is you can stream your output from the color page to a client that might be halfway across the world. This is only in the studio version but if you go up to workspace and down to remote monitoring, you can sign into your Blackmagic Cloud account and your client can just kind of sign into a meeting room and view a high quality stream of your viewer. So you could do something like get on a Discord call and they could monitor your color from their iPad from anywhere in the world. We're definitely going to be checking this out in a future video. Very, very exciting. Another thing I'm excited about that's easy to miss is that from the edit page, you can go up to file export current frame as still, and it will ask you where to put it. And you can save a high quality still frame right from the edit page. So you don't have to go into the color page and do that. That's something that I do all the time. It's really nice to be able to do that. A couple other things in the Fairlight page, if you have, let's say multiple different tracks, I'm just kind of throwing this in to show you guys. They have this way of grouping tracks now. If you go up to the index, we have these groups. You can command select, control select any number of tracks and hit this little button to add these to a group, we'll say group one, and you can tell it what controls you want this group to share. So if you want to be able to mute a bunch of tracks all at once or editing or fader or whatever you want to do, you can kind of select what aspects this group affects and you can turn on any of these groups. And if I have this group selected, if I mute one track, that's going to mute them all. If I adjust the fader for one track, that's going to adjust the fader for multiple tracks. And I can kind of turn this functionality off and on just by clicking this little group button here. So I can do them individually like this and then click on the group to move them together. So that's a really neat way to be able to kind of link things up for precise control. And tracks can live in multiple groups. So you can kind of have these little subgroups and you could make a group for all of your sound effects. And then another little group for just the footsteps sounds and one inside of that for just the cement footsteps. And so you could have a bunch of tracks and just link them together with groups and you don't have to put them all on one track. And what I think is so cool about this is you still have the individual adjustments. The group just helps you kind of adjust things all together and they'll still keep their relative differences. Really neat. Oh, by the way, also, if you have a bunch of sound effects in your media pool, you can select a bunch of them and you can have it analyze the audio to kind of figure out what all of these clips are. So if you have a couple sounds of dogs barking, if you have a couple sounds of, you know, cars going by and everything, it will go through any sounds or even just the audio from your video and it will classify these different clips based on what the sound is, like it recognizes the sound. So I just gave it a, a random bunch of clips here, but it thinks it found clips of ocean, of nature, of river, of lake or stream, and it kind of adds these categories as smart bins 
it can kind of sort your audio for you in a really smart way. So these are the clips that have dialogue in them. All of these are people talking. So I could do something like analyze all the clips with people talking and then right click and analyze them further by transcribing the audio. There's all kinds of fancy things you can do with this. It's so cool. One thing that is pretty exciting in the deliver page, if you scroll over here, we have this preset for TikTok, which doesn't seem like that big of a deal, except for you can actually upload directly to TikTok, which if I'm not mistaken, that's actually not really a thing in most apps. Uh, you have to use your phone or, you know, or render it out and then put it on your phone and then upload it with your phone. But you can actually sign into TikTok and render a video directly to TikTok from Resolve. That's pretty freaking cool for all you content creators out there. You people, you people that are on the TikToks. This is a big deal. Not to mention that we have the automatic subtitles. And so it's just making things easier and easier. So there are a lot of really cool stuff, a lot of neat AI stuff in this release. I'm really excited. I'll be making more videos about this. And yeah, I'm really excited about how this is going to unlock so much creativity for the future. Thanks guys for hanging with me. Let me know your favorite features down in the comments. Okay.